A lot of us say how great and kind we would be if we had all the money we wanted. But somehow, in the real world, money can make us mean and petty. Out of habit, even the rich get stingy. When they give, it's often for a deduction, to wield power, to get jobs for their kids. Now get set to meet a man who has reached the highest level of philanthropy. A remarkable man who doesn't worry money to death. He just has fun with it. <laughs> well... <laughs> he was born a little over 80 years ago on Christmas yeah. Day. Yeah, right. He is an amazing man who loves to give his money away. Mr. Kirsch is a very shy person. He doesn't want anybody to know what he does. He just wants to know that he is helping people, and, that, and that's his need. I think he's exaggerating a little bit, but mainly he's right. I'll say, you, you gave them all this money for this? He said, Irving, you're nuts. He said, well, look, he said, so what? So it's going to help somebody, or it's going to be fun. Still, in the average, how much do you give to the Salvation Army a month? Is this really, you really want this crap? I mean... Oh, yeah, no, yeah. it's important. It's important. <laughs> <laughs> because of what you're talking about, I mean, I, it sounds embarrassing. That's not embarrassing. Uh, I, I, th I think over a period of our relationship with them, we've given them over a million dollars. Irving Kirsch came to Albany about a half a century ago. He made a fortune in real estate, but now he is giving a lot of it back. A chunk of it is with partner Sid Albert, a lot of it is from Irving alone. You're doing it because it, that's the nicest thing anybody can do is to help somebody else. And it's the biggest charge I get. Irving Kirsch is a rich man who does not worry his money to death. He does not go around wearing a hair shirt, and he does not limit his giving to pet causes. I made it a point never to say no because of somebody's religion or color or anything like that. But you, you give to Baptists, you give to Catholics. Seventh-day Adventists, born-again Christians. You, you're not trying to tell me that, that you're an easy hit, though. Yes. <laughs> and as a result of this? What do you need? How much money do you need? If somebody asks for, for $100 or, my, or $200, <clears throat> I'll give it to them. Hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands. Irving Kirsch will give, especially if he knows that whoever is asking has nowhere else to go. Thousands a month to the Salvation Army at the Unity House. And he wants documents showing how the money helped real people. Pots, pants, towels, cooking utensils, stuff like that, which you say, are they emergency? Well, for people who don't have any at all. They're emergency. New apartment has nothing for it at all. Underwear, pants, shirts, nightgowns, robes. When Irving reads about the needs of the less fortunate, it breaks his heart. The client has a newborn baby who is currently sleeping in a dresser drawer. A new crib makes someone happy. In turn, it makes Irv happy that his money bought it. Dan, there are so many things that he does that are so good. Um, Irving's wife, Elaine. He does it because he loves it. He loves people. He loves, uh, he loves the involvement. It's excitement for him. Well, I'm really not making any sacrifice. I'm not giving up, really giving up anything. Well, you're giving up money that you've earned, right? Yeah, but, uh, I mean, you know, that's... I mean, I'm not suffering. There's no resource out there for them. Uh, they, they could be in between. All over, people and organizations have needs not covered by insurance or state or federal funding. At places like Hope House, that, says Luke Krupka, is where Irv Kirsch steps in. Irv Kirsch is the safety net for voluntary agencies, and without Mr. Kirsch, there isn't anywhere for us to turn when we're in crisis. Uh, if your fire alarm doesn't work, if a client needs clothes to go for a job interview, if somebody has nowhere to live and we don't have any money for rent for that person, we call Mr. Kirsch. And how long do you think you're going to stay? Well, Mr. Kirsch is no ivory tower philanthropist. My biggest satisfaction is helping individuals who I know face by face to face, hand to hand. And how are you doing? It's tough, but I'm trying to get it together. It's hard. When you get out, you know, I'm in the book. Yep. Pondering the plight of Hope House residents about to go back into society, Irving comes up with another idea to give away his money. But somebody gets out of here. Yeah. I want to provide the weeks. When they go out of here, we're going to give them a check for, for a certain amount of money. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, sir. I can't open a bottle without this. I can't open a can without this. It's a simple little thing, but it means a great deal. When a quadriplegic like Bruce Stone needs assistive devices as lifelines to independence, funds given by Irv and partner Sid Albert buy them. 
Irv and Elaine bought Bruce the microwave. You, you've got to be prepared to say yes to almost anything which which appeals to you as being consistent with what you're trying to do, which is to help people who can't help themselves. So thankful are visiting nurses to Irving that they have invented a verb. Let's curse him, they say, when they need something not covered by insurance. When polio victim Paul Hess went to his son's wedding, Irv Kirsch paid for ambulance and total medical care. And he gave thousands to leukemia victim Herb McLaughlin. Of all the people that you felt who are beyond reproach, you just, who, who would you say they are? As a group, I, I would say the sisters. When he heard that the infirm nuns at Albany's Holy Names needed a railing, he bought it for them. To see you too. Take care. My of wife isn't around. Let's grab a kiss on Oh, this. sure. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Take care of yourself. At the top of contributors for South End Health Center, Irving Kirk. <laughs> Tell me, what, what did you say to him before? I, yes, I said to him, aren't you the man that gave us this wonderful place? Somebody said they need pampers. Uh -huh. Who says they need pampers? Traveler's Aid, Regional Food Bank, Association for the Blind, all heavily endowed by Irving. He and Elaine just bought and donated a home for battered women. He built a gym in the Albany County Jail, and when a prisoner gets out, Irv gives him 25 bucks. If they stay out of jail for a year or more, then we give them 100 bucks. Did you give me two? How much? In his Albany office, he gets a plea from a caller. She says her mother is sick and she can't pay the rent. The month before, he had given her 200 bucks. No, I can't give you 200. You come down, I'll give you 50 bucks. You. I probably am getting screwed by this lady in the sense that she's using me. Irving ended up leaving 100 bucks, but before he gives money away, he has to be convinced that those in need have done all they can to help themselves. Still, he knows better than to second guess himself about every dollar he gives away. Usually, if you do that, you end up doing nothing. If you're going to do this and it pleases you, then you'll do it without finding a reason not to do it. Would you consider yourself a realist or a romantic? I'm a realist. I don't expect anything from anybody. That's why I'm hardly ever disappointed. And I've done some silly things, which I haven't even told you of, and, and even my wife doesn't know about it. But never once has it been a saying that, that son of a bitch, I never should have helped them out. When Irving dedicated a fountain and garden across from Albany City Hall, he had another whim, an inscription to Elaine, the fairest flower of them all. She thought it was great, so once she thought it was okay, it was simple for me to do it, and I sure get a lot of mileage out of that one. See, you're a romantic. I'm a realist. I know it. <laughs> I knew what made her happy. <laughs> when you talk with Irving about his philanthropic motives, he mentions his roots as a Jew. I come out of a, of a religious background, which stresses that the first, the first and cardinal rule is to be charitable. If you are charitable, if you do good deeds, that that will wipe out everything else on your slate. Accordingly, he gives to his temple and to some other Jewish causes. But he prides himself most on his intimate relationship with the black community. When we hear the churches sing, they're singing to God. That's a form of prayer. And they do it so well and so willingly that I'm more moved here than I am in my own temple. You come up here. Happy Mother's Day. When he attends, it's customary for him to speak. This time, he has a special offer. That if there's anyone that you know who would like to go to college or would like to go to law school, who qualifies and who can't afford, that we will either get them a scholarship or that I will personally see that we will pay their tuition for such school. As usual, he leaves a few gifts. I'd like to leave $1,000 for the junior choir, $2,000. $2,000 for the senior choir, and $5,000 for my dearest friend, and for Just so that if I've overlooked anybody at all, I'd like to leave a $5,000 contribution to the church. Yeah. Irving Kirsch is a great man with a great heart, and up to now, he's hesitated to talk about himself. There are many of us who do all sorts of things, not necessarily money, do all sorts of things, and they have no other reason to do them except that it's what they want to do, what they like to do, makes them happy, it's consistent with their, their sense of right or wrong. I'll be back in a moment with some final thoughts about Irving and Michael.